G'day, Jason the Middle-Aged Gear Junkie here. The Joyo Amp in a Box series of pedals, also known as the Sound series, have been around for several years and found their way onto the boards of many players, uh, particularly on their live setups. And myself included, I've owned the American Sound here since 2017. It was on my live board for about three years before I replaced it. But it's a really, really decent uh, amp in a box and, and you can really sort of pull off Fender-ish tones that the audience is really going to be none the wiser to. These pedals have developed something of a cult following. I've heard of people using these for direct recording and things like that and a lot of people swear by them. So I decided to get my hands on the other three pedals in the series so that I could test all four of them back to back to sort of evaluate myself and see what I think of them. I'm going to start off with the American sound as that's the one I'm the most familiar with and then I'm going to go through each one and just tweak a few knobs and particularly looking at the voice control and the gain. This is my direct signal which is pretty dull and pretty lifeless with the exception of the reverb. I've got the voice control wound down and I'll just turn that up as we go. So uh, here's the American sound. Sounds a little bit amp-like, it just needs to get up to unity gain, so I'm going to turn the volume up a little bit. I mean, that's, that's more usable than having um, a direct tone. I'll just wind up the uh, voice control a little bit. Already you can hear it's a much more crunchy in the mids. Yeah. So if I want to make a clean sound, I'm just switched over to my neck. Uh, single coil. I'm going to turn the drive down, turn the volume up. That's definitely a usable clean sound. That sounds so much better than this. And you could stack drive pedals in front of that and just act as this is your amplifier. It sounds pretty damn good. Now, as you hear, when I turn the voice control up, it changed the character of the mids. And um, as a result, it's getting a little bit louder and starting to distort more at lower gain. So I'm just going to turn the gain up to halfway with the voice control up halfway. Yeah, that's that's pretty decent tone. I mean, let's turn that voice control up even further. Mid control makes a huge. Whoa, started to uh, clip the input signal there just by turning the mids up. So it's very mid heavy. And that, that high is fairly brittle. Again, clipping the input signal. When 
when I use this pedal live, I usually use leave the EQ where it is and just uh, fiddle with the voice control and the drive. <laughs> So my, uh, my go-to sort of clean setting is something like that. Maybe with a hair more gain. You can get clean sounds that sound half decent and that act as a good platform for other pedals and it also works well as a drive pedal so it can do both quite well. All right the Vox AC tone. All right there's my signal again. Here we go. It's a bit, it's a bit honky. All right, let's turn the drive down a bit. It's breaking up the harder I pick, which, you know, that's, that's a good thing. Because that's what a Vox amp does. Uh, all right, voice halfway. It's a decent drive tone. Let's see how much gain it's got. It's going to back off the level. Uh, yeah, that's got a lot more saturation than an actual Vox amplifier, and I'm guessing if I turn up the voice control, we'll get even more. Yeah, way, way more gain than you'd expect from any of the classic Vox amplifiers, that's for sure. Uh, if I wind, wind back the voice a bit, let's see if I can actually make it sound like a Vox amp, because to me that doesn't sound very Voxy. So Vox amps don't have a whole lot of bass, so I've wound a bit of bass out. Ish, ish. It's in the ballpark, but it's at the back of the ballpark. <laughs> the British sound. I wonder what this one could be. Decent sort of crunch sound, not bad. Oh, that's awful. 
That is awful. That's not too bad, but with the voice control all the way up, it sounds like a... That tone, that's a good drive tone actually. Not bad at all. So let's check out these tone controls. The highs. It's just scooped Marshall sound from the late 80s. Uh, yeah, it kind of does it, I suppose. Let's check out this mid control. I'll put everything back and maybe turn down the voice control. Yeah, there's a lot of emphasis on the mids in these pedals. They, they really are quite drastic. <laughs> Yeah, that works pretty well as a drive pedal. Here's my direct signal once more. Alright, take me to California. It's not floating my boat yet. Alright, let's turn that voice control up. That really did warm up the mids a lot. That's a pretty warm sounding little overdrive, I don't mind that. And that's pretty thick and uh, woolly I think. Let's turn that mid control up. Wow, that actually turned the gain up a lot just turning that voice control. I think that's supposed to be like a rectified type sound, but it sounds really woolly and muffled. Again, I mean, as far as the rectifier sort of sound goes, it's in the ballpark, but it's way up in the upper seats. It's, I mean, I would never get rid of my, um, my G-Rectifier if I bought this. I like the, the low gain setting better with the um, voice control on the left hand side. Let's see how it cleans up, so turn the gain down. Adds a bit of something, but it's, it's nothing special. 
going to talk too much about the American Tone because I have covered it in a previous video. But you know what, I think out of all of them, this one has the most usable sounds in it. I think uh, you can use it as a clean platform, which is what I used to use it for. I'd set it up clean and then put dry pedals in front of it. it does that fine. But I also really like the overdrive sound that you get from it. Now, the overdrive sound sounds good with the voice control to the left and it also sounds, I think, even better when you turn the voice control to the right. So uh, all up, I think out of all of them, if I had to choose one of them, it would be this one, not just because I'm the most familiar with it, but, but I just think it has the most usable sounds in it. The British sound, which is the sort of Marshall in a box type pedal, this is pretty good. Um, I like the drive sounds in it, uh, particularly with the voice control uh, somewhere between say nine o'clock and three o'clock. Once you turn the voice control up too much, it really does start to narrow the frequency band and it starts to sound like a, um, a cocked wah, which I don't like in an amp sound. Uh, it's, it's okay to add that to an existing tone, but when that is your tone and you can't get it out, it doesn't, doesn't sound particularly good. But uh, yeah, definitely some handy drive tones in that and it does sound Marshall-esque for sure. The California sound, this is supposed to sound like a Mesa Boogie. Uh, I think with the voice control turned to the um, to the left, it's supposed to sound like one of the Mark series of amplifiers. Now, with the voice control all the way down on this pedal, it really sounded dull and lifeless. When you wound it in a bit, um, particularly up to about halfway, it had really, really warm and rich mids. Um, sort of kind of reminded me of, um, dare I say, a Dumble style. Um, overdrive, which I found really, really pleasing and uh, I actually really enjoyed using that. When you crank it up, both the voice and the gain, it's supposed to sound more like a rectifier. Now, having owned a rectifier for 20 plus years, I can tell you um, it doesn't really do a good job of that. Uh, it's very woolly and fluffy. Um, it's, you know, I, I think there's other, other pedals on the market that do that rectifier sound better than this. So, yeah. Um, I found for that sort of classic bluesy rock sort of tone with the with the uh, voice down a bit, it sounded pretty good, but for high gain stuff, uh, I, I wouldn't touch it. Lastly, the AC tone. This would have to be my least favorite out of all of them. I really don't think that it sounded particularly Vox-like. Uh, it's it's Vox-ish, I suppose, is at best. Um, it's got way more, uh, gain and saturation that you would then you would get out of a Vox amp even if you cranked it all the way up. Uh, yeah, there's not much I can say about this that's going to be particularly positive. I mean, I didn't like it clean. I didn't like it particularly dirty. The, on, the only setting that I liked on it was uh, having the drive just a li just slightly broken up sounded okay. But everything else, uh, yeah, there's, there's better pedals out there that can do that job than this. So what do I think of this series of pedals? Well, firstly, I want to point out that they are actually clones of a series of pedals brought out by Tech 21. And it's worth noting that a lot of these cheaper Chinese companies don't come up with their own designs. They're more than willing to copy existing designs. And that's no different with this series. What I will say is you're hard pressed to find anything better for the money that you can, would pay for these pedals. They are incredibly cheap. I mean, they go for about 60 Australian dollars brand new. Secondhand, I mean, they're really cheap. I mean, this... The AC Tone, I got this in mint condition for 30 bucks. I got the American Tone here for $25 uh, secondhand, and I got the British Tone here for $20 secondhand. And of course, the uh, the California sound here, uh, this was lent to me by my mate Dave, so thanks Dave for letting me borrow that. Because of pedals like this and how cheap they are, there's no excuse anymore to have a bad direct live sound. Now, I recently uh, saw this this performer in a shopping center. She was playing a beautiful Fender Stratocaster. She had a beautiful voice, but her guitar tone was really dull and lifeless. And it was because she was plugged direct into a PA. If she had have just had one of these in a gig bag, um, that would have brought her guitar tone to life and enhanced her performance. Uh, now I, for example, this basically lives in my gig bag as a backup, just in case something happens with my Strymon Iridium. Uh, there are some gigs that I've played that are a bit, uh, a bit rough and, and I may not be on a stage, I might just be on the floor and uh, I put away the Iridium and I pull this out because if this gets beer spilt on it, it's it's not a problem. I can get another one pretty cheap. So if you found this video interesting, um, please give it a like. Uh, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. Remember you can join the Middle Age Gear Junkie Facebook page. Uh, I've put the link in the description below. Other than that, my name is Jason and I hope you have a wonderful day. See you later.